Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together. Alright, so I thought that today we'll just look at reaction rates. So if you have not subscribed, just make sure you're part of the family. Alright, so let's have a look at this question. They say we've got a group of learners that use the reaction between sodium disulfate and excess hydrochloric acid to investigate one of the factors that affect reaction rate. The balanced equation for the reaction, there it is given there. And they say the learners carry out uh, five experiments under the same conditions, changing only the factor that is investigated in each experiment using the experimental setup as shown below. Right, so uh, if you've done this experiment before, uh, you would know that, um, you know, uh, a white precipitate or, you know, some, uh, uh, that it turns from being colorless uh, to being white and as a result you know you won't be able to see uh you know the the x at the bottom okay as that uh white precipitate forms okay so they say to us they recorded uh, the time taken uh, for the cross to become invisible right remember it becomes invisible because of that uh, milkish white substance that starts forming and they say when viewed uh, from the top okay so the learner's results are shown in the graph below, right? So you'll see that in our graph, we've got uh, time, okay, or the inverse of time and the initial concentration. So it means that they actually keep changing the concentration and measuring what happens to the inverse of time, okay? Right, so they say to us, define reaction rate, right? We know that it is the change in the moles of products formed or reactants used per unit of time, okay? So that is how we'll define that, okay? In 5.2, they say write down the investigative question for the above reaction. Now remember that the investigative question must actually question uh, the relationship between the independent as well as the dependent variable, right? What's the independent variable? It's definitely going to be concentration, right? Uh, you want to know how will concentration, okay, affect the rate of the reaction, okay? So that is how we will ask that question. How will uh, concentration or the concentration of uh, sodium disulfate, right, affect the rate of uh, the reaction, okay? Right, and they say name the substance responsible for the disappearance of the cross. Now, you'll note in this reaction that, um, you know, sulfur forms uh, as a result, and uh, that is the one that causes uh, that cross. Well, not necessarily to disappear. You know, when I did this experiment, I used to actually think that the, the, the X actually disappears, but uh, it's only because uh, of that milkish substance that forms uh, at the bottom, right? Um, and hopefully next year, I'll be able to give you guys some, some experiments, right? Um, so they say to us, okay, uh, the substance is sulfur, okay? So please remember that. Um, so they say, give a reason why the same cross must be used in all the experiments, okay? Right, of course, you want to make sure that there is consistency, right, um, that there's no variation. The only thing that we are varying is the concentration of, uh, you know, sodium disulfate and everything else has to be the same, okay? Now, they say to us, use the collision theory to explain the effect of concentration on the reaction rate. Okay, so remember I said to you, when you are explaining especially when it comes to reaction rate, right? So first of all, we're going to mention in this case, um, uh, you know, the, the fact that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's concentration that is actually making uh, the difference, right? So um, now we'll say the change in concentration, okay? So the change in concentration Right, so we're talking about that change there. Uh, will increase, 
all right because i saw that the graph shows us an increase in concentration or we can say the increase in concentration increases the number of particles per unit volume right so it means now you've got more particles per unit volume all right and so what happens it means that there'll be more frequent collisions per second okay so it will increase the number of collisions number of collisions per second all right or you can say per unit time so in that case it means that you will increase the rate of the reaction right of the reaction right of course you can say this in whatever way that you you seem uh, you see fit right you can say an increase in concentration will increase the number of collisions uh, per unit volume right now more particles uh, have will have a correct orientation um you know uh, and that will increase the number of um, effective collisions per second and that will increase the rate of the reaction okay right so in whatever way that you would like to uh, answer that uh, but as long as it still talks to the you know the the collision theory right so uh, they say in one of the experiments now we've got uh, 50 cubic centimeters of sodium disulfate is used and it takes 20 seconds uh, for the cross to become invisible, right? They say calculate the total mass of sulfur that is formed. Now, of course, um, we don't have as much information except, you know, the 50 cubic centimeters of thiosulfate. We don't have the concentration, right? So what we might have to do is go to the graph and look where is it that we've got uh, 20 seconds but remember in the graph they didn't give us seconds right what did they give us they give us the inverse of time right so let's see what does 1 over 20 give us right so for 5.6 i'm gonna say well 1 over time is going to be 1 over 20 okay and of course that will give us a uh, 0 0.05 okay so yeah let's just check that there so we've got one divided by two um sorry 20 and that gives us 0 0.05 right per second so what i'm gonna do is let's go on to our graph and look for 0 0.05 uh, per second there okay and we're going to look for the concentration so if this is 0 0.04 so 0 0.05 has to be there uh, here okay so there it is there you can see uh, so which means the concentration let's see what is the scale there from 0 0.05 okay uh, so which means that we are adding half of 0 0.05 okay so uh, look at that so which means that our scale 0 0.05 divide by 2 that's going to be 0 0.025 right so look at this we're going to add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.025 right uh, plus 0 0.1 there and so that's 0 0.125 so which means that is what our concentration will be uh, 0 0.125 rather 0 0.125 okay right so when the time was at uh, 0 0.01 i mean uh, 0 0.05 
uh, our concentration is 0 0.125 and so I'm going to take that so which means the concentration right of uh, sodium thiosulfate is 0. Point, uh, 0 0.125 moles per cubic decimeters okay and so as a result what would be now remember what are we looking for we're looking for uh, the mass of sulfur that is formed right so remember that sodium thiosulfate was the limiting reagent why they told us that hydrochloric acid is in excess so let's find out the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate okay and in this case that's going to be concentration times volume okay so that's 0 0.125 multiplied by you remember the volume they've given us there as 50 cubic centimeters we need to express that in cubic decimeters so we're going to say 50 divided by a thousand which gives us 0 0.05 okay so let's find out what is uh, our okay so we're going to say all right so 0 0.125 multiplied by 0 0.05 uh, that gives us 0 0.00625 okay that's moles right now let's check what is our stoichiometric ratios uh, for sodium thiosulfate as well as uh, sulfur right this tells us for every one of this we get one sulfur so which means for any amount of moles of sodium thiosulfate I will form the same amount of moles uh, of sulfur, right? So therefore, I can say, well, therefore, the number of moles of sulfur should be equal to the number of moles of sodium. Uh, sodium 2. Okay, so sodium thiosulfate. Okay, and why is that? Because it is a 1 to one ratio okay so i'm gonna write that so it is a one to one ratio right but remember what did they what were they looking for they were looking for the mass right so we're going to simply say number of moles is mass over the molar mass okay so uh, number of moles is 0 0.00625 we want the mass and the molar mass now remember from the periodic table we've got two sodiums so that's two times 23 plus sulfur times two which is 32 times two plus three oxygens so that's three times 16 okay you can calculate that first uh, but i'm just going to multiply throughout uh, with it so I'm going to say multiplied by, okay, so that's 2 times 23, which is sodium, plus 32 times 2, which is sulfur, plus uh, 16 times 3, which is for oxygen. And I get 0 0.99, okay, so we can almost say that the mass is 1, right? okay so let's say 0 0.99 perhaps just to be more on the accurate side okay so that is what i get in terms of uh, uh, that calculation there right so let's go on to the next one all right the next part they say the graph below represents the maxwell boltzmann uh, distribution curve for sulfur dioxide okay and they say q is a label on the vertical axis all right and in this case they say what does q uh, in the graph represents okay so please remember this represents the number of moles okay or you can say in this case uh, the number of particles right but usually we just uh, talk about the number of moles okay right so that would be the number of moles against the kinetic energy 
and of course uh, uh, in this case we evaluate that uh, based on the uh, Maxwell distribution uh, Maxwell Boltzmann rather right they say to us redraw the graph in the uh, in your answer book okay and they say calculate uh, uh, clearly label the graph as a and then they say on the same set of axes all right and um, they say sketch the curve that will be obtained uh, for sulfur dioxide at 40 degrees now i want you to note this graph the initial graph was given at 30 degrees so now we want another graph at 40 degrees now remember when we increase temperature what happens is that our peak uh, will shift right uh, to the right but what will also happen is that uh, our distribution will get wider all right so we get a graph that looks something like this you'll see that the uh, my peak is now at a higher temperature or rather my kinetic energy uh, in this case is uh, higher the mean kinetic energy right and then uh, secondly you'll see that uh, my 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 distribution has widened all right and as a result that is what my graph would look like okay right so i will leave it there ladies and gents i hope that you you were able to uh, uh, to understand okay so i think it's much better if i use particles here all right and we shall leave it there right i hope you understood and enjoyed this question and of course that you will get full marks on it okay otherwise from me for now i will see you guys next time shop shop